It's being billed as the biggest change to the way we live, work and play since the birth of the internet. The creation of a network of 3D virtual worlds dubbed the metaverse. When it comes to VR, it feels real. But it comes with a dark side. Tonight on Dispatches, we investigate alarming reports of extreme racist and virtual sexual assault in this brand new frontier. Imagine Damn. black get back to the fields, cotton picker. <gasps> Have you ever been raped? Tell me where you live and I just might make that come true. We reveal children are especially at risk. She has to suck this So you like getting head from minors? Dude, that's a, that's a 13 year old. I like little girls from the age of 9 to 12. That's just my thing. And we ask, who's meant to be policing it? It isn't OK to do it in a classroom, in a workplace. So why is it OK to do it in the metaverse? I think it's a very clear breach of safeguarding. You have an online Wild West. Good morning. Thank you. I'm Yinka Bikini, a journalist, DJ, and tech lover. I've been around from the beginning of the internet, when everyone got their first computer till now, till it's uh, something part and parcel, it's an extra limb. But now, the world's biggest tech companies are forging ahead with creating a new frontier, a virtual universe where, using headsets, we can all interact in real time, in three dimensions, by creating virtual versions of ourselves, or so-called avatars. Pumping $10 billion into its development in 2021 alone, one of the companies leading the charge is Facebook, which recently changed its name to Meta, as Mark Zuckerberg promotes in this personal message. I believe the metaverse is the next chapter for the internet. The metaverse is the next frontier, just like social networking was when we got started. The most popular VR headset used to access the metaverse is the Oculus Quest 2, owned by Meta. Over 8 million have been sold worldwide, and Oculus was the most downloaded app of Christmas Day 2021. My brother Collar has come over to try a new fun golfing game in the metaverse. Oh, sick. Jeez. Are you in? I'm, I'm in something. It is very interesting how immersive this is. It's all in the hips, you know what I'm saying? You're Ooh. joking. The metaverse is kind of like jumping inside a video game. It promises to be a 3D version of the internet. The metaverse today is still at a very early stage, although people are already spending billions of dollars on virtual items. Big brands such as Nike are using glossy ads like this to promote their vision of a future where we will all shop and be entertained in the virtual world. Analysts see the metaverse in the future as an $8 trillion opportunity. Recently, Ariana Grande did a glitzy, impressive virtual gig to tens of millions in the metaverse. The idea is that you don't really have to touch or do anything. You just put the headset on and you just speak and use your natural gestures and you just are in the metaverse. This immersive game illustrates just how true to life the metaverse is. Whoa! Yep, I died. Yeah, I'm falling. I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, a lot realer than I thought it would be. You kind of forget that you're in a game. This is a one step further blurring yeah. the lines between what's reality and what's fake. It could get a bit dangerous. My first experience of the metaverse underlines just how real virtual reality feels. But I've heard worrying reports that all might not be well in this brave new world. Mother says she was virtually groped by three male characters within seconds of entering the metaverse. I also came across some extremely concerning reviews of virtual reality apps. One star, paedophiles everywhere. Do not, and I repeat, do not let your children on this app. There was a lot of sexual activity and references to drugs and swearing. Do not download this game. My child tried to commit suicide because of the bullying going on. Meta's VR policies say they prohibit a range of bullying, abuse and harassment and sexualising minors in any way. 
Some apps such as VRChat and RecRoom have introduced default safety bubbles around users' avatars to prevent them from being touched. I want to find out if this has made the metaverse safer, so I'm going in undercover. The only way to log into the Oculus headset is with a Facebook account, so I've set up a profile of a 22-year-old woman called Jade. Confirm. That looks pretty legit, I think. My name is not Jade and I was not born in the year 2000, but who's going to stop me? I just did it. Some of the reviews I've read are about Rec Room, one of the most popular apps with over 3 million active VR users. The first thing it wants me to do is create an avatar. Using an internationally recognised system of age rating, the app appears in the Oculus Store as appropriate for age 7 plus. Rec Room does have a junior account for under 13s, which limits their interactions with other users. Agree to the code of conduct. Rec Room's code of conduct says they do not allow sexist, racist, discriminatory or harassing language or behaviour. I agree. Although you see the users as avatars, people use their real voices, which we've disguised for this programme. I'm in the Luxie nightclub. I've been in here for less than five minutes. Shit, how old are you? How old am I? I'm 22. You get out of here, this is mine. Within minutes, it all felt pretty uncomfortable. I'm being, sur I'm actually surrounded. In Rec Room, I have a safety bubble to stop other users getting too close to me. Hey, you gotta turn off your bubble. One user keeps asking me to turn mine off. You gotta go to settings. Get away! You, you, open, open. Open my button. Open no, go you. away! I was being harassed by one user, so I decided to block them. I'm blocking you. Block. About to steal your bitch too, Jade, bro. Hurry the oh, up, let's go. Then other users started to surround me and sexually harass me while using racial slurs. Yo, bring her over. Whatever you do, I'm catching this on camera. Oh, I ain't never seen some British people. Shit, I hate British people. Oh. Well, so, uh, well, the well, reason well, why everyone's well, surrounding, well, surrounding well. me is because I'm the only girl here, right? That's no, the reason why you're I'm British. I was being pressured to remove my safety bubble. There was a lot of sexual harassment going on. It's really intimidating. Although you can block users, it appears many are breaching the codes of conduct, seemingly without repercussions. The internet's pioneers in the 1990s preached free speech, claiming they were platforms, not publishers, and not responsible for any content posted by users. Only now are regulators attempting to change this. The other most popular social app with concerning reviews is VR Chat. It's advertised in the Oculus Store with a parental guidance rating. Its community guidelines says the platform does not permit hate speech, harassment or inappropriate content. I want to find out whether they are working. I'm starting in one of their 50,000 worlds called Midnight Rooftop. OK, we're going in. <laughs> Within seconds, I hear a conversation with some shocking racism. We felt it was important to include it to demonstrate how unregulated it is. How the f*** am I still trusted you? I'm racist as f***. The reason my name That's is in that font thing. is because it makes it damn near impossible for admins to click their social list and look up my name. So if somebody has a problem with me and we're yeah. gonna give a someone shit. on One the of you two women f*** this man and call this guy a It feels so intense to be in this room, like I'm really there. I should have f***ed this b on VR chat. The girls that like rape are pretty based. They always hate it's shocking the level of racist, sexist and homophobic slurs flying around. Some are so extreme, we can't broadcast them. I've been in a different room for five minutes when someone's avatar starts interacting with me. I got a question. If me and two, me and you, were the last people on Earth, would you reproduce with me? Not, not as it stands. I can't, I can't see your name even. Oh, hello. Hi. Jade. Who's gonna yes. Stop you do, like, your... What? Stop, stop me. Stop you what? Who's gonna stop me? He's saying he's a rapist. His avatar just kept walking towards me. I had my hands up like this, like, please stop. He repeated, who's gonna stop me? I felt intimidated. 
because it's so immersive. You physically feel like you're there. It feels real. I then hear... Hey, hey yo, how do you, uh, how do you get the attention of a Jewish guy? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, how, how, you, how do you, you get throw a you do this? Oi, <laughs> 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 You black, imagine me black, get back to the fields, cotton picker. I hate <laughs> spread the message. The homophobia, the sexism and the racism, very, very casual. I felt like they now have that platform and almost like the encouragement to be as disgusting as they were being. I mean... <laughs> this behaviour is a clear breach of both Meta and VR Chat's rules. So let's see if I can report it. I'm starting with Meta. Add a video for review. Record or upload a video from your camera roll so a trained specialist can review the situation for potentially harmful behaviour. Who are you reporting? While you can report abuse when you're in the room, once you leave, it's very hard as it's asking for the user's name, and that's not always legible or easy to remember. I tried to report 10 users to Meta during the investigation, but as they were not associated with an Oculus account, they would not take action. Although I successfully reported the 10 users to VRChat, they replied, due to privacy reasons, we cannot discuss the results of the investigation. And that's frustrating, as I have no idea whether any action has been taken. The Centre for Countering Digital Hate found that users on VRChat are exposed to abusive behaviour every seven minutes. What's so worrying about this abuse is that evidence shows that it's more harmful than abuse on traditional social media platforms. To learn more, I'm speaking to Britton Heller, who is a human rights and technology lawyer specialising in content moderation. The way your brain is on VR is very different than the way your brain is on Facebook and Twitter. Experiences in VR will implant in your hippocampus in the same way that you make memories. It can make VR feel real. The sexual harassment and, and the racism especially felt like they were the norm. But I say sexual harassment, is it even that on VR if, if it's not real life? I would argue that it is because your, your brain responds to the action and the behaviour. Yet very little of what I'm witnessing is currently against the law in cyberspace. Over the next few days, I witness more abuse. Okay. Have you ever okay. been raped? Tell me where you live and I just might make that come true. You feel me like... Everybody laugh at this Can you hear that? Everybody laugh at this n -word. And they're all doing it. They're all doing it. It's just like a bullying free-for-all. Leave the game right now, boy. The amount of times that I'm hearing the N-word, the F-word, just being flung around. Just because you put this on, all of a sudden you're not responsible for what you say. It isn't OK to do it in a classroom, in a workplace, on public transport, on the road. So why is it OK to do it in the metaverse? The apps and platforms do say they moderate content but from what I've seen, it doesn't seem to be working. There really isn't a way at this point for AI-based content moderation to work well in VR because you have to do it in three dimensions and in real time. Companies who are in the metaverse now really aren't making clear what rules actually apply and how those rules are going to be enforced. And I think that you can't just have rules without enforcement standards and transparency around them. Do you think that it's fair to say that the onus or the responsibility as it stands at present is mostly on the users? They're really relying on the users to flag this behaviour for them. And that, that, that puts a lot of weight on people. There's a challenge with trying to, to push the growth of these devices versus push the safety of these devices. And they really have to be in sync. Recrum told us they continually invest in their moderation systems. Users can limit the voices they hear to only friends, favorite friends, their current party or none. They said they use a combination of automated systems with human oversight and review that both proactively and reactively moderate code of conduct violations and they also maintain copper compliance with the assistance of external partners and experts. 
Their moderation efforts can never provide 100% coverage, but trust and safety is core to their mission and something they strive to improve every day. The abuse and harassment I've already witnessed in the metaverse is bad enough to shock most adults, but I've begun to notice there are kids in there too. When they get caught up in it, things get a whole lot worse. So, do you still enjoy getting head for 14? Yep. Are kids safe in the metaverse? We found evidence to suggest they're not. Yes. I like little girls from the age of 9 to 12. That's just my thing. Okay. I've gone undercover to investigate abuse in the metaverse. So far, I've witnessed some shocking behavior from users, including racism and virtual sexual assault. And I found a lack of moderation on the apps I visited. Imagine black it back to the field, cotton picker. What's worse is I've started to notice children in here as well. How safe is the metaverse for them? To find out, I'm going to pretend to be a kid and go back undercover. I am going to make a profile of a 13-year-old child. Now, that's the youngest age that the headset said it's suitable for. But to be honest, I could be 10 making this. It doesn't ask for any ID when I make new social media profiles. So I could be any age in reality. So the VR headset that I'm using is called Quest, which is owned by Facebook, now known as Meta. And they just announced that they are going to be introducing basic parental controls with their headsets. This will include an automatic block on downloading or purchasing age-inappropriate apps in the Oculus Store. Although the apps I've witnessed this shocking behaviour in are rated as PG and for age 7 plus. So this is my Facebook page for Ivy Smith, born on the 1st of January 2009. And now I'm ready to get my headset on. Concerns have been raised as to whether apps are doing enough to protect children in the metaverse. I'm going back into VR chat as 13-year-old Ivy to see what rooms I can get access to. This is one of the rooms that feels like it's more geared towards adults, but nothing's stopping me. My profile is set to be a 13-year-old and I've just clicked go, so. If I roll this dice and I get a... If I get a five, she has to suck this Exactly. Okay, well, you can go into a close. Damn! Exactly. This is a minor. It sounds like there are loads of kids around. We've obscured what happens next. So you like getting head for minors? <laughs> oh my gosh, are they simulating sex? <laughs> so, do you still enjoy getting head for minors? They sound like kids. We showed our footage to Andy Burrows. Head of Child Safety Online Policy at NSPCC. The clips are really disturbing. You can just count the ways in which children are being exposed to, to really troubling experiences. I think any parent will watch those clips and think, I wouldn't want my son or daughter being exposed to that type of content. I think it's a very clear breach of safeguarding. It's chaos. I feel uncomfortable. Apparently, I'm 13 and I'm just witnessing all of this. The stakes here are so much higher because this isn't just about children hearing inappropriate things or having troubling experience. You know, this is a real immersive environment. It isn't just text on a screen. That avatar there is in that space and it's feeling very real to them. The ways in which harm can be experienced and felt could be significantly greater than other forms of technology that we've seen before. Seeing what was happening to other child avatars was bad enough. But then, despite me saying my avatar was 13, some unwanted male attention came my way. Hi, I'm 13. What if I pressed you against the wall with my massive titties and said nothing? Dude, that's a 13-year-old? That's a Back away! There's someone who's in a bikini who will not leave me alone. I've told them I'm 13, I'm trying to run away from them, and they're just chasing me around this club. Back away! One of the safety features VRChat offers is the option to block other users. I might try to block them and see what happens. 
Yes. Oh, they've gone. I'm starting to show a bit sick. Oh, how long have I been in there? Oh. I'm an adult and I'm overwhelmed and I'm a bit scarred at what, at what I've seen. It's not a place that you want kids to be. Children are going into those spaces um, expecting that they will be safe. And what you're seeing is spaces that are being designed to appeal to children, to draw children in, but then no even cursory attempt at safeguarding, at moderating. You have an online Wild West. Only in response to negative media coverage are we now seeing Meta roll out parental controls. What does it say about that company's commitment to child safety? But it isn't enough to pass the responsibility to parents. That responsibility sits with Meta to make sure that its products are safe by design. I also witnessed other children displaying sexual behaviour in VR chat. Uh, uh, and, uh, I like f***ing yeah, bear. He feels so good. And people claiming they are attracted to children. Yes. I like little girls from the age of 9 to 12. That's just my thing. Today's experience was nothing short of phenomenal, I would say. I, I think that the level of access my underage account has to content that is so explicit. Earlier this year, the UK government introduced a world first online safety bill, saying it wants Britain to be the safest nation in the world for children online. Not everyone is convinced. Right now, this legislation, at best, it's not clear, and at worst, it's enabling companies to dodge their responsibilities when they're building new products like the metaverse. So the online safety bill has to tackle these problems. The bill holds tech firms accountable for content users post on their platforms, with an additional duty to protect young people from legal but harmful content. If companies fail, they could face hefty fines from Ofcom. I show Damien Collins, MP, chair of the Joint Committee of the Draft Online Safety Bill, footage from the investigation. It really worries me. You're creating experiences that feel real. The, the problems that we know exist in the real world, we've created laws to try and protect people from them. They could exist in a way which is totally uncontrolled in the metaverse, unless we make sure that we can police it. Are you confident in the online safety bill? Yes, I am. It's, it is the necessary first step to make companies responsible for the tools they create. It's about making sure that the areas that should be in scope are, and the regulators clearly got the power to act in those spaces. If a company can turn around and say, well, there's no way of policing the, the site in the way that you want or this experience in the way that you want. The challenge to the regulator then has got to be uh, to say, okay, we accept you're doing as much as you can do. Or the regulator could say, well, this is so bad that if you can't police it, why is it running? It is not yet in a state where it can be safely launched. We asked the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport to comment. And they pointed us to this statement by the Culture Secretary last week about the online safety bill. It is the online safety bill. Metaverse is included in the bill, and not only not only is it included, but moving forward, the provisions that are put in the bill will al allow us to move swiftly to deal with Metaverse and others. I mean, we didn't even know TikTok existed when this bill started its progress through journey, which will allow us to move quickly to respond. VR Chat told us. Underage users are not permitted to register an account. If they lie about their age and are detected on the platform, they are immediately banned. User safety is a top priority for VRChat, and they've provided users with a number of tools to help them protect themselves. When reported, content violating their terms of use is removed immediately after review. Likewise, users violating VRChat's terms of use face suspension or termination of their accounts. In addition to the standard block, mute and kick tools in VRChat, the app also has an on-by-default personal space tool launched in 2017 that hides users that approach you too closely. They added they're working hard to make VRChat a safe and welcoming place for everyone. Predatory and toxic behaviour has no place on the platform. About what I witnessed on VRChat and Rec Room, Meta told us they don't own these apps and they can be used on phones, laptops and other VR devices, not just Quest. They encourage other companies to opt into the identity system they've created. 
because their system allows people to block or mute abusive users more effectively across all virtual worlds. They cannot take action against customers on devices they don't make. They added that they prohibit anyone under 13 from creating Quest accounts and design some experiences only for people 18 and over. There's little doubt that the metaverse is set to transform our lives and much will be for the better. But my investigation has revealed just how dangerous it can be, especially for children. It's not clear who's going to protect us and more importantly, our kids. Can we rely on those who run it to put our safety before their profit?